Hey, Way family, thank you for tuning in. God has an amazing word for you, so go ahead and check out this message. And after, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We love you, God bless. This word, no, is powerful because it's a, it's a sentence. Like, no, and you put a period, it's a sentence. But on the other side of the no, I really believe this, is your purpose, eternal life, prosperity, new start, maybe a business opportunity. This just saying yes. We could, it's important that, that no does not become part of our default answer. Like, no, I'm not gonna do it. No, I can't do it right now. No, I'm not ready. Be careful that no doesn't become the default answer. It's super easy to say no. The no's in life I've learned are another way to say no is it's, it's an objection. And what's an obje objection? An objection is a reason or argument offered in disagreement, opposition, refusal, or protest. That means I'm saying no, and let me give you a reason why I'm saying no. And unless we overcome these objections, we'll continue to say no to our purpose, no to helping one more person, one more person out. Now God is saying, if you would just start saying yes, I will begin to show you your destiny. There are some people that you're going to help, that you're going to love, if you would just say yes. Is there anybody in here saying, I'm ready to start saying yes. The no, the word no. We're going to learn how to overcome that word today. And we're going to look at a story. Of course, it was thousands of years ago. But we're going to look at a story of a Gentile woman. It just says a Gentile woman. It doesn't give her, us her name. It was a woman. It was a Gentile woman. And the reason it said Gentile, she wasn't Jewish. And what that meant was she wasn't brought up in the temple. She, she wasn't a church goer. She was considered a non-believer. But God did an amazing miracle with her. And we're going to see that God did this miracle and she was surrounded with no's all around her. And she overcame every single no to get a miracle for her daughter. Your, your miracles are surrounded with no's. And the question is, are you going to let those no's convince you? Or are you going to say, I know it's all no around me, but I'm still believing at the end there'll be a yes and the vision will come to pass. It doesn't matter how many no's are outside of you. The most important thing is that there's a yes and there's a belief and there's a faith in you. So let's look at this scripture in Matthew 15, 21. Then Jesus left Galilee and went north to the city of Tyre and Sidon. Now, this is a really simple statement, but he came to this city to meet a person. After you hear this story, he comes... He does a miracle and he leaves. He said, but what's the big deal? He walked for 50 miles to get there. He walked for 50 miles to meet up with just one person. You know what that means? Is that God is not looking at the crowd, but he's looking at you. And the power of Jesus has come to you right now and wants to help you with your severe problems. And you know why I said severe? Because if it's overwhelming and it's too big for you, it's not too big for God. Jesus is here right now with his love. He's not here to judge you. He's here to help you. Does anybody in this room need some help? So he comes and a Gentile woman who lived there, where did she live? She lived there, came to him pleading, have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. So we're seeing her pleading or seeing her crying out. She's literally screaming above the crowd. She's screaming, Lord, have mercy on me. What does that mean? Have mercy on me just means this, help me, help me. I need help. She's screaming above the whole crowd. Could it have been a crowd this big? And there was one lady that was screaming, 
so loud that she stood out. Did everyone in the crowd probably need help? Yes. Did everyone in the crowd maybe have a similar problem? Yes. But there was one lady that was screaming at the top of her lungs and she was saying, this is my moment for me to get a miracle. Help me, Jesus. She had to humble herself to even do that. It's so easy someone asks you, how's it going? And it's so easy for us to say, good, it's great. But how about saying, you know what? I need some help right now. I need some prayer right now. Things aren't going so good right now in my family, in my life, in my thinking. If we could just do that more often, instead of trying to show off in front of people, just be real like this lady. I got a real problem at home. It looks good on the outside. I'm driving a nice car. I'm dressed really good. I got my makeup on. But the truth is, there's a lot of pain going on in my life. And I need a God that will help me. And if we're willing to say, Jesus, help me, we'll get the help. So she cries out for help. But let's keep on reading. But Jesus gave her no reply, not even a word. Oh, Lord. Just think about that. You're crying out to Jesus and no reply and no word. What would you start, start thinking? To me, that sounds like a no. Wow. Gave her no, then, then, look at this. His disciples urged him to send her away. Tell her to go away, they said. She is bothering us with all her begging. Let's go deeper. Wow. Let's think about this. Jesus has given no reply. Jesus trained disciples. She hears them talk about her. And they're telling Jesus, Jesus, tell her to go away. She's bugging us with all this crying and screaming and begging. She's messing up our church service. We want things in order. There's some times that you gotta, got, you gotta get a little disorderly to come on, to fight against the thing that's been controlling you. There's a time that you gotta, you gotta raise your voice above the voices that are in your head that are telling you, give up and quit. And you start praising God and saying, God, I need a miracle. I need a breakthrough. My kids need to be saved. Help! Go away. Whoa. That's like coming to church. And the staff is, you're coming for help. And the staff says, you're bothering us. Why don't you just go away? Imagine if you heard that. Would that rejection chase you away from your vision? Because I've learned this, that when you're ready to get a breakthrough, a spirit of offense will show up to talk you out of your vision. And then you start walking away with an objection. The reason I'm no longer pursuing God, because when I needed the church most, they weren't there for me. I'm leaving the church because my leader offended me. I'm leaving my ministry because of a person, what they did or didn't do for me. Let's just think about that. No, 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 and then in this story, rejection. How many of us would have left after just being ignored? They must not think I'm important. What about now the staff saying you're bugging us? Let's keep going. Sounds like a lot of no's here. Then Jesus said to the woman, oh Lord, it's getting worse. Now, Jesus already knew that this story would be written in Scripture for us today. He would use her as an, as, as a, as a, 
motivation, as an example to every single one of us to never give up on the dream, never give up on Jesus, keep on worshiping, even though it's hard, even though it's difficult, even though people are talking about you, don't you get out of position. If this lady can do it, we can do it. She didn't realize at the end of this story that we would be talking about her and her experience for eternity. This would be her testimony. She just needed to get through a few no's. And if she could get through a few no's and keep her faith and keep her worship and keep her vision, she could get to her purpose to speak to the world from this story. Are there a lot of no's surrounding you right now? If there are, this is just a test. Keep pressing in. And after your test, you're going to have a testimony. Then Jesus said to the woman, oh, man, this woman had a lot of faith. He said, I was sent only to help God's lost sheep, the people of Israel. Like I'm actually, this is what you're saying. I came here to present hope first to the Israelites, not to the whole world right now just to them. Hmm. But she came and worshiped him, pleading again. After the rejection of the disciples, after, I want you to get this, after being looked like ignored, you know what came out of her? Worship. She wasn't offended. She never lost her worship. She already, she, she already knew, I am here for a purpose than bigger than me, and I am not going to be offended out of the breakthrough and the vision that God has given me. Someone's life is dependent on me staying in position and continually worshiping. Worship. You know what this is talking about? This is between you and God. Don't let no one steal your worship. God is looking for, God is looking for those that worship him in spirit and in truth. Is, is your worship fickle? The, you can only worship with perfect conditions. That's not true worship. Real true worship is when you worship and you're in the middle of a storm of no's, storms of rejection. It looks like it's going from bad to worse, but when it's all said and done, there's still a worship and a praise inside of you. When you squeeze me, worship comes out. Because under pressure, we really find out what we're made of. You know what she was focusing on? She was focusing on Jesus, her answer. She wasn't focusing even on herself. You know what? You can't focus on, focus on yourself because if you focus on yourself, you don't think you qualify for anything. She wasn't focusing on her past failures. She wasn't focusing on her family life. She was focusing on the vision that she came for. Well, let's look what she came for. Woman, I was only sent to help God's lost sheep of Israel. But she came and worshiped and pleaded again, Lord, help me. You know what she does? She doesn't change her confession of faith. She came saying, Lord, help me. I got a daughter that's demon possessed. And I'm here. I know this. Nowhere, no one has been able to help my daughter. But I know, I've heard it through the grapevine, you are the Lord, you are God, here in the flesh. Everybody might not believe it, but I believe it, and you're the hope for my home, for my family, for my marriage, for my future, for my mind, for my depression. I need you, Jesus, and I'm not leaving till I get a breakthrough. My daughter's life depends on it. Help me. Jesus responded, it's getting worse. It looks like it's getting worse. But while it looks like it's getting worse, you're one step closer to the vision coming to pass. Jesus responded, 
It isn't right to take food from the children and throw it to the dogs. Oh, Lord. Jesus, did you just call me a dog? Did, did you just call me, what kind of dog? Like a puppy dog or what? Poodle dog? A mangy dog? What? Jesus is pulling something out of her. He said, baby, you're going to preach to the whole world. In 2019, you're going to prepare thousands of people to get ready for 2020. Come on, baby. I, I know you could do this. I'm not giving you more than you can handle. I'm, come on, I'm going to use a nobody to be an example. They think, they think you're a nobody. Come on, baby. Come on, you keep coming. Don't you give up. I got a breakthrough for you. A matter of fact, I came 50 miles just for you and your baby. This is not an accident. Come on. At that point, it's like, what? Did you call me a dog? Now, that's the straw that broke the camel's back. You call me a dog. You ignored me. Your disciples say I'm bothering them. And now you call me a dog? That's it. I'm done. That's enough no's. I'm, I'm turning away from this. Obviously, I'm not who I thought you were. You're not who I thought you were. I wonder how many people walked away from their miracle and they have a story that's unfinished. It's an unfinished story. They let all the no's finally convince them it wasn't for them. And Jesus has given us a, a radical, crazy example of a lady that stuck it out for her daughter, for her family. Look at this. She replied, I love this. After all the statements that were being made and all the no's and resistance and rejection she was facing, she replied, that's true. Call me a dog all day long. Okay, I'll be a dog in this story. That's not the issue. You could call me whatever you want to call me. I'm not here for a name. I am here for a miracle. I'm not here to be glorified. I'm here to glorify you. I need a miracle. You know why this is important? Because you cannot receive a miracle with a whole bunch of pride. Some of us can't receive a miracle because you're more concerned about what people think than what God thinks and you've lost your focus of why you're even here. You don't get enough credit and you're out. I want you to get this. God's going to promote you. You don't have to promote you. Don't you worry about it. If you feel like you're in a time of your life where you're being humble, I know what your next season is going to be because God gives grace to the humble. What God is saying, I exalt the humble. I already know what's coming next. Promotion's coming next. Come on. Breakthrough's coming next. Prayers, answers are coming next. Sometimes we need to get in a position to receive. So she says, yeah, that's true, Lord. But even dogs are allowed to eat the scraps that fall beneath the master's table. Well, she was saying, okay, I'm a dog. Let's just play that. I still need crumbs. And I don't know a dog that doesn't eat the crumbs off the table. I know every single dog gets something to eat. He may not eat on the table, but he eats under the table. So call me a dog. I just need some crumbs, but I'm not leaving here without my miracle, without my breakthrough, without my freedom. I'm not leaving. You could say no, all you want is still a yes in my soul. I still have a vision. I see my baby free. You know what this is all about? Fighting for a miracle. We got too many sissy Christians, baby Christians. We don't know how to throw down and fight. So what if they offended you? Don't you receive the offense? Because if you receive the offense, you can't receive your miracle. You can't receive your breakthrough. You can't receive your joy. 
Stop allowing the enemy to speak to you. See, if we're going to overcome our no's, let's finish reading the story. And I want to give you some ways to overcome your no's. And then Jesus said, this is where it finally turned around. Dear woman, you just hit a home run. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> It's kind of like this, like as you see, like a baseball game. Strike one, strike two, it's gone. <laughs> Just because it looks like a strike, it looks like you're ready to strike out. It looks like everything's coming against you. God is saying, I did not come here for you to fail. I brought you here today. I've come to, for, to you right now because I have a plan and my plan will prevail. And what God is saying here, can you hold on to the vision long enough to give birth to it? Dear woman, Jesus said to her, your faith is great. Your faith is big. Your request is granted. And her daughter was instantly healed. She was one sentence away, one push away from seeing her baby set free from a demon. There was a demon that was holding on to her daughter, but the Bible says, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. You know what that means? Is that we gotta start pushing back on what's pushing us back. And you're gonna say this, it doesn't matter how much you push, the push in me is greater than the push that's coming against me. You can resist me all day long. I'll resist you. By the time we're done, you will flee. Someone say fight. fight. We gotta fight for our kids. We gotta fight for our marriages. We gotta fight for our neighborhoods. We gotta fight for our sanity. We gotta fight for our ministries. It's just a fight. Are there any fighters in the house? We gotta fight to just stay planted. This is like a super fight right now, just like the winds. There's like a wind that comes through the churches and pull up trees and throw them out into the streets with no roots. And God says, you shall be like a tree planted by the waters that will bear its fruit in season. Your leaves will not wither and everything you do will prosper because you're planted. Don't let an offensive person pull you up. You know why? Because if they could pull you out of here and they could pull you out of your ministry, you'll always be pulled out. And I'll tell you why. There's offensive people everywhere. Where are you going to find a church without offensive people? As a matter of fact, I don't want to be in a church without offensive people. I, I want offensive people in the church. That means we got some people who need some freedom. They need, come on, they need some salvation. They need some healing. They need some love. There's no such thing as a hospital with no sick people. We, come on, it's okay to have some sick people here. Can we handle being around sick people and not allowing the sickness to penetrate our heart? Don't let their no become your no. So how do we overcome the no's in our lives? Number one, you got to identify the source of the no and reject it. You know, this is what I'm saying. Say no to no. Say it with me. Say no. Identify where the no's coming from. The first place your no can come from, there's three sources of no's is our personal self-talk. It comes from ourselves. This no comes from our fears, our doubts, our upbringing, our past experiences, selfishness, present habits, pleasures, procrastination, negative outlook on life, 
lack of faith, trust in God and others. So this no doesn't come from anyone. It comes from us. This woman could have easily talked herself out of getting her daughter the help that she needed. She could have said, I'm sure he's way too busy for me. I'm a Gentile woman. On top of that, I'm a woman. I'm a Gentile and a woman. He won't give me the time of day. He came, too, he came a long way. He traveled at least 50 miles to get here. I'm sure he's too tired to tend to me. I bet there are going to be so many people needing his help. There's no use of me even trying. It is going to be embarrassing, especially if I say, if he says no. What if I fail? I don't want to get my daughter's hopes up and just let her down. It, matter of fact, it's my husband's job to be out here. I'd be the spiritual leader of our family. I'm not supposed to be out here. I'm going home. It's crazy. I'm here all alone and no one in my family's fighting with me. I'm supposed to do this all on my own. I got a demon-possessed baby. She was my daughter. She's lost her mind in the process and been taken over by a devil. And none of my family, including my husband, is even here to help. She could have talked herself out of it. Make sure your worst enemy is not living between your own two ears. It's not no devil. It's the nose in your own mind. The other source of nose comes from others. It just comes from others. These no's usually come from those closest to us and also from society, the voice of the majority. They'll tell you, no one does that. And just because no one has done that and no one has ever done that in your family doesn't mean you can't do it. We're not called to be normal. We're not called to be part of the, the majority. We are the chosen minority. Is there anybody here that's realizing, I don't need to follow the crowd. I got a king that's leading me. And with him, I can do what others can't do. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Stop letting society tell you what's normal. Stop letting society give you your values. Stop letting your family tell you what can happen and what can, ha can happen. It doesn't matter if no one in your family ever succeeded. It doesn't matter if everyone in your family is a drug addict and failed. It doesn't mean that you can't get out of it. It doesn't mean that you can't get a miracle. And it doesn't mean you can't go back there and help them get their breakthrough. Stop letting others define your future. They tell us, they tell us we can't do it. They tell us they tried it and it didn't work for them. They point out every obstacle that is in the way and magnify the mountain that's there. They say, that we're going overboard, becoming fanatics. Do you think you're better than us now? Or they might be the ones that should be saying yes, and they're saying no, no, no. They remind us of all our shortcomings and how we don't qualify for that blessing. But we see how this woman overcame all the no's she experienced from others. Just because all, all of them were saying no doesn't mean the God in the end won't say yes. Behind every no, there's a yes. But can you push to the yes? Can you keep moving forward? Yes, Lord, I'm going forward. Yes, I'm going to continue showing up on Sunday morning. Yes, I'm going to keep on praising you. Yes, I'm going to keep on worshiping you. Yes, I'm going to continue declaring the vision. Yes, I'm going to continue asking for help. I'm not going to say no. My yes is alive and well. 
Their no's have not conquered the faith in me because I didn't get my faith from them. My faith is not in society. My faith is not in my ability. My faith is not in my record. My faith is not in my past. My faith is not in my education. My faith is not in my bank account. My faith is not in my daughters. My faith is not in my wife. My faith is not even in me. My faith is in God. And I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The other source of no's is circumstances. All the facts can be pointing us to a big no, but it doesn't mean it needs to stay no. Our faith in God can change facts. Our faith in God can change facts. Faith is more powerful than facts. The facts were that her daughter was severely demon-possessed. The fact was no one could help her up to this point. The fact was that she was a Gentile woman. The fact was that the chances of her getting close enough to Jesus and getting his attention were slim to none. The fact was she wasn't a churchgoer and she didn't have a lot of church and word background. The fact was she had no one to help her. The fact was she was all alone. The fact is that you've got a bad report from the doctor. The fact is that no one in your family has ever succeeded. The fact is no one, you don't have enough money to pay the bills this week. The fact is that you don't have an education or experience to qualify for that job. The fact is that you're addicted and have not been able to overcome your addiction. The fact is that your marriage is on the rocks. The fact is that no one in your family is living for God. The fact is, it looks hopeless. The fact is that you have been diagnosed with depression. But I thank God that Jesus is greater than all those facts. <laughs> Say it with me, Jesus, Jesus is greater than the facts. Jesus, Jesus changes, changes facts. Give God praise for that. I mean, you got to just say, uh, I, I received that. I want to give you one more major point, how to overcome the no's. Get a passionate vision to help someone. The woman had a vision to help her daughter that had a serious problem. She was demon possessed. This mother had faith that Jesus could help her and he was, she was determined that she was not going to be denied. Demon possessed means this. She was under the power of a demon. She was tormented. She had severe depression, suicidal thoughts, in a cycle of self-destruction, in a prison of addiction, in darkness, probably lost her mind altogether. She looked hopeless. She had out of control anger and rage in severe poverty, she was bound, she was oppressed, and she was lost for eternity. If mom does not overcome all the no's, her daughter will not be helped. If we don't overcome the no's, people will not be helped. We gotta stop saying no to purpose, no to serving, no to discipleship. No to, to, to our Power 12 uh, groups. No to giving. No to tithing. And we got to start taking all those no's and turn them into yeses and say, God, if you could use anybody, there might not be a whole bunch of yeses here, but I'm one of them, Lord, that's ready to say yes to your purpose in my life. I want to help somebody. You know what that means? Is that your why needs to be bigger than your no. Like Why? 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 I remember when God called us to go walk on the streets. I didn't want to go walk on the streets. When we started this church, God said, don't get a building. Go love people, find their needs and meet them. 
And I go, well, how am I going to do that? He goes, you're going to go into the toughest neighbors you could find, and you're going to knock on all their doors. And when you find the need, you're going to meet it. And I, when he told me that, that was the last thing I wanted to do. But the why was bigger than my no. Because God told me, if you don't go, they won't get the help. If you won't go, they won't have a shepherd. If you don't go, they won't be saved. This is not about you, Marco. It's about me touching them. I need you to go. And I remember I took my five little girls and we were knocking on doors in tough neighborhoods. And people said, man, you crazy taking your girls out there. But God told me, expose your girls to real life. Come on, go out there. I'll protect you, just go. We're so busy protecting our schedules, protecting our lives, that we forgot about ministry. We forgot about our purpose. We're so busy working that we forgot to work for the Lord. But of course you should work, but not to the point that you have no time for God. We, have, we go to church if it fits in my pure, perfect schedule. It doesn't work that way. I'll give if I have more than enough. Not always do you give out of your more enough. Sometimes you give sacrificially out of your not enough. And then it turns into more than enough. And you might not have a lot of time to, to invest, but maybe you could volunteer starting once a month. And you said, I'm gonna, I don't have a lot of time. But that little hour that I got, I'm going to give it to God. And I guarantee God will begin to multiply that. So we started knocking on doors and we started knocking on doors. We did find people that were hungry. And God says, have compassion on them. Yeah. What if you were in that position with your five girls and you're freaked out because you don't know what you're going to feed them tonight? And that's the condition they were in. I met some young ladies that had a house and they had a little ice box with eight kids in the home, three different ladies living there all by themselves. And they don't have a fridge. They don't have a stove. They don't have a microwave. I knocked on that door and asked them, do you have a, fr a fridge? Do you have a stove? Do you have a microwave? No, I don't have anything. I go, I'll be right back. We went, we bought them a fridge, a stove, and a microwave. I got it delivered to them. I called them back. Did you get the fridge, stove, and microwave? Yes, we did. And God says, now go get them some food for the fridge, the stove, and the microwave. Then we go out and go to Stater Brothers and then bring them some food and then visit them every week and see how they're doing and pray with them and walk them through life to get them to the next place. I didn't want to do that at the beginning, but the why was too big for me to walk away. Her why was too big for her to get offended out of her daughter's miracle. This is not just about you. This is about your children. This is about your grandchildren. This is about the next generation. And this is about every single person that you have contact with. We show up on Sunday morning because the Spirit of God said, come on, put me first on Sunday morning. Seek first my kingdom and I'll add everything to you. You followed the voice of God. You said yes. And God is saying, Keep on saying yes, 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 yes. Maybe in the morning we need to start saying yes 50 times. Yes, Lord. 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 Whatever you want, Lord. If you could send anybody, I know I'm not much, but send me. I've messed up, but send me. I have a bad background, but send me. I'm not very talented, but send me. I don't have a high education, but send me. Just send. If, I, if you need someone to send, I'll go, I'll go. And if we're willing, to say, yes, I'm excited about your future. I'm excited about your destiny. I'm excited about your prosperity. I'm excited about your health. I'm excited about your kids. I'm excited about your gen the next generation. It's time. I am done letting know. 
have its way. All right, come on. I will not let no, come on, have its way. I am done with that. We're finished with it. It's yes, I will not accept no for an answer. Let's give God some big old praise that he deserves. Come on, let's give God some praise. Come on, it's a yes praise. Come on, it's a worship. You know what, you're, when, you, when you're thanking God and you're praising him, you know what you're doing is making way for him to come in. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's message. We pray that you were encouraged and empowered. Don't forget to check out some other messages we have on our YouTube channel and share, subscribe to thewayworldoutreach.org. We love you. God bless you. Have an amazing week.